I don't, I don't think I ever knew him. I know his daughter pretty well. He might have been on the bench when I started. I don't know. He probably was. Can you get through this? Good morning. Uh, this is the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City's morning docket. Today is Thursday, January 26, 2017. The, during the morning docket, we're going to be hearing regular items such as new transfer expansion and hardship applications. If you have an electronic device, I would ask that you please silence it or put it on vibrate. When your case is called, please step forward, state your name in the microphone, and if you're going to be giving testimony, please uh, be prepared to be sworn in. Thank you. May I call the first case, Mr. Chair? Please. Calling John Cherney and Alicia Cherney, JR's Barn Grill Incorporated. Trading name is pending, 1229 Hull Street. This is a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. It's an application of transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment. Good morning for the record, Melvin J. Kanensky, 19 East Fayette Street representing the applicants in this matter. Good morning. Uh, would those who are going to testify please raise their right hands. You can raise your right hands. Please swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. This is a transfer of an existing location. And it's really not a transfer. It's a stock transfer. Uh, the um, applicants in this case uh, have been uh, basically in there uh, since 2013. They had a arrangement with Ms. Armstrong, who was the um, current licensees, for a buyout. As time went on, they finally had been able to acquire all their, um, all the stock in the uh, corporation. Uh, as a result of that, um, they now are asking the license to be transferred to um, John and Alicia uh, Cherney. Uh, they've had um, meetings with the Locust Point Civic Association. And we have a letter of, of approval. Uh, give one to Ms. Russell on that. Thanks. So, uh, it's just for our sake, uh, Mr. Kanansky, along with the uh, materials that were provided us were various um, letters in opposition. Have Are these addressing those or are these separate from those? And they have met numerous times with the community people and it addresses the situation and they had one of the letters that was uh, by um, people in the um, community that Mr. Um, Office of Conti, Fenn, and Lawrence. And I think you have with, withdrew all of that. I see that letter, yes. So I don't have to make that exhibit. And in addition there, too, they met with um, many people uh, in the neighborhood and they have letters of support for people in all the streets that are um, surrounding that area. Uh, I think, I don't know if you have that. I saw you, 
commissioner had it, but I'll. Yeah, the petition. Yeah, with yeah. The, about 28 names on it all. Uh, from the area, then I'll need to submit that. Well, let's make sure Ms. Russell has all these things for exhibits, okay? All right. I'll double check. Um, is there anyone here to testify in opposition? Okay. Just wanted to make sure. And then originally one of the objections had to do with uh, outdoor table service, which has been uh, withdrawn. Um, the um, entertainment is, is the same. They're not making any, any changes um, to the um, uh, establishment at all. Uh, they'll take the alcohol awareness course. They'll be um, certified and get fingerprinted. Um, the, um, and I'm sorry. There's is there an MOU or what? What is what? What do we have? It's not a, not an MOU. It's just an understanding with the neighborhood. That's how Lucas Point usually does does. Oh, I see. I'm, yeah. I was looking at the wrong document. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, your clients have agreed to these uh, various limitations that are the five that are outlined in uh, Mr. Cilio's letter. Yeah, they're not really like limitations. There are things that they um, usually like to see happen. Uh, Mr. Lipsitz, uh, the attorney for them, was at all these meetings. Uh, if you want a further clar clarification on that, I think he could further clarify for you. But you say they're not limitations, but they say things like um, live entertainment is only for special events. All live entertainment is going to stop at 1030 on weekdays, 1130 on weekends. The death spell level is going to be limited. Uh, no outside promotion restricted to the restaurant, so they strike me as limitations. No, uh, but there, that's the subsequent letter, I think, clarifies that. And one did you have in your yeah. hand there. Okay. I mean, but are they, have they agreed to these things? And, and generally, they agreed, if you read to it, that to have to continue what they ha have been having there for the last so many years, uh, and they would also agree to uh, meet with the community and be members of the community. Um, Ms. Cherney lives two blocks away, and she's there all the time, so they had numerous meetings with that. Okay. It's not to be considered as a restriction on the license or anything like that. What was the problem with the previous license holder? Was she not on the premises or something? I think so. I think uh, I don't want to speak for somebody getting up in age because I'm in the same bracket. Um, but I think that's what happened. She wanted to uh, retire and to um, be able to, you know, uh, get out from under the business. Uh, they've come in, the general manager's here, um, Ms. Cherney's here, um, and uh, they're going to uh, operate the place and uh, be a member of the community and so forth. So I think they ironed all that out. That's the reason why it was postponed mm -hmm. uh, the, the first time. Okay. Um I will give the commissioners a chance to ask questions, but let me say, folks, when you respond, it, please step up and speak directly into this, and you can turn it to you because we're being recorded and we're on tape, and if you don't speak into it, we can't pick up your voice, okay? Uh, commissioners, do you have questions? Um, I guess, Mike, who is the general manager? Yeah, you want to step up? Yeah, and please identify yourself, sir. Chris Allison. Chris Allison, can you tell us a little bit about your background and experience? Um, I've ran restaurants over the last 25 years on my own, sat on the board of various restaurants like Don Pablo, sat on four liquor licenses. Um, I opened one of the best Italian restaurants in the city, La Scala, back in the day um, with Nino. Um, I've worked at the Harrison's Harbor or Harrison's Pier 5 back in the day before it was what is now McCormick and Schmecks. So I've been in the city quite some time. Okay, and you said that you've sat on four liquor Four liquor licenses, Baltimore County, Anne Arundel County, Howard County. I'm not sitting on one in Baltimore City and Montgomery County. So what do you I've mean you on. sat on them? I was, what does that mean? I was, a, I was the, as being incorporated, you have to have members that sit on the board. I was one of the board members for all of those licenses. I was an officer. Officer of the corporation. You were an officer of the corporation. Were you the licensee? I was a licensee in PG, is it PG County? PG County and Anne Arundel County. Okay. And uh, which locations or what uh, licenses did you serve as the licensee? As a licensee, Anne Arundel County. What was, was the, the name of the? Judges Chambers. The, the, the restaurant was? The name of it was called the Judges Chambers. And? That, that was tasty. It was tasty. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing how many calls you got, though. Like, can I talk to the judge? I'm like, no, nope, not the right number. <laughs> um, we, I also sat on the board of uh, Don Pablo's in Prince George's County. Okay. And during um, your time sitting on the board, is, to use your language, of those licenses, were there ever any violations? I've never had a violation in 25 years. Okay. Will you be the person that will be ordering alcohol for this location? Yes, ma'am. 
And what other responsibilities and duties will you have? I oversee all operations, uh, from cooking to staffing to um, regulations, following all regulations. And are you TAM certified? I am. Surf safe certified. Okay, and as of when? Uh, I've been certified for the last 25 years. I, we rotated off, so. You're currently Currently, certified. I am surf safe certified, yes. And TAM certified? In well, I'm alcohol certified for the surf safe. The TAM program, I do not have, but we ha that's the surf safe alcohol program is a little more in depth than the actual 20 question TAM survey. Okay, and when are those due to expire? Uh, 2019, I believe. What is the plan with respect to uh, keeping employees, uh, changing the menu, operations? Uh, what is your thinking about how the, the, this location will actually operate? Well, right now we've been operating it for the last two years and trying to shift the focus from alcohol to food. So right now we're running about a 50-50 mix, which is very well for us right now. When we started, it was a 25, 75, more 75% alcohol than 25% food. So we've shifted to, to more of a family style atmosphere. Um, we're trying to get, as Locust Point is, a more up and growing community with more families. We're trying to shift the move of the bar business out of the way as much as that being ancillary to the food portion of it. Mm -hmm. um, we have changed some of the menu presently. Um, we're in the process of changing it some more. We have, as UA is one of our major clients for lunch, we try to factor around healthy heart stuff that we're working towards right now. So when you say we, um, have the been team. there for we two have a management years, team. Uh, who, who are you referring to? Oh, I have a management team. It's uh, one of my associates, which is Steve Young, and one of my associates, which is uh, the chef. We just stole him away from Sullivan Steakhouse, uh, Sebastian Trostbank. So you've been there for two years, Correct. and you're, you've been overseeing a shift from a, a more alcohol focus to Correct. food and, and changing the, that balance. Correct. And obviously you're going to be staying there. Well, that's our goal, yes. We want to be ingrained in the community long term. So it, bars come and go by day and night sometimes. Restaurants stay forever. I mean, that's a legacy kind of situation for me. Well, if you're lucky, they stay forever. Well, we hope if we're lucky. Good. <laughs> well, we hope we're good. Yeah, okay. All right, those are all the questions I have. Uh, Mr. Allison, I appreciate your, your testimony, and it sounds like quite experienced. If I could ask a few questions, um, I am struck. Uh, by the number of letters in opposition to this, and I, I hope you guys have seen them because I'm going to ask you a several questions on it. Now, I, I recognize many of these letters were dated in October, and it seems like you have uh, reached out to the Locust Point Civic Association, so I, I give you a lot of credit for that. Uh, Mr. Chenery, your team has been running this establishment or managing this establishment without having owned it for, am I correct in saying, two years? 13. 13 years? No, since 2013 okay. is when they start right. buying in on the, okay. on that. All right, and so, yeah. yeah. I'm not Mr. Chenery. Oh. This is Ms. Chenery. Oh, I see. one of the owners. I'm sorry. My name is Eric Lipsetz. He's I'm the counsel, attorney. Uh, counsel for Okay, me. sorry. Uh, okay, so Ms. Chenery, um, and again, for the record, I'm, I'm struck. Again, this happens occasionally where we have licensees that come before us and the majority owner isn't here, the one who owns 99% of, uh, of the establishment. Let me just explain that if I can to Please. you. He, he and his uh, wife had a chance to, as you all may, go to Hawaii. And he was supposed to come back and Delta, favorite airlines, I have his itinerary, canceled his itinerary. He was going to come back specifically so he could see you all. And, and he, I, I can give it to you if you want. They, chance, they changed his itinerary. Uh, his daughter has been working there uh, for the last 30, um, for the last uh, time, about 30 hours a week. She goes down the street, so she's familiar. She's and, been to all the community meetings. And I appreciate that, and that, that, that's completely fine as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I do appreciate that, um, that reason. So, Ms. Chenery, um, as I said, these letters struck me as, as problematic. And so I want to go through some of these issues with you because, quite frankly, I, while I appreciate the Locust Point Civic Association letter in many ways, and, and please correct me, it seems more of a form letter that says here's what we basically ask uh, establishments in our community to do. It doesn't, doesn't bind you, which is part of my issue given the, the number of concerns that have been raised by several uh, 
of your neighbors. So let me go through those and see how you're best addressing these concerns. Okay. Um, parking. So we know that um, there have been some parking issues with staff uh, placing orange cones. This is what's alleged placing orange cones in the street to reserve parking spaces. Can you speak to that? Um, we had a community initiative meeting um, that I would say October, a couple months ago, um, to address all of these issues with the neighborhood. Um, we spoke to that specifically. We explained to them it was, we only did that for delivery purposes. If we were having a delivery made that day, we would block it off. We obviously informed them that we would no longer do that because it was upsetting some of our client or our customers. Um, and then as far as the other issues that the letters have spoken to, we specifically took those with our community initiative meeting. Those members who wrote the letters came to it. We addressed it specifically with them. Um, and I think we, we reached a re resolution as far as like the parking is concerned, um, the noise mitigation. We brought a sound engineer in to kind of help with figuring out what we can do to muffle those sounds a little bit more for the neighborhood. Let, um, let me go through these and because okay. so because I just want to for my own um, <coughs> understanding. Uh, snow removal. Um, I presume you're working with the community when it comes to that so that we don't have incidents. Uh, there's a, a mention of a large blue food truck which routine, routinely parks on Cuba Street blocking the street entirely. Um, can you speak to that? That is the same as with the parking that was for our delivery purposes. So that's not a food truck, that's a delivery truck. It's a, it's a specific for the company, yes. It just delivers, like if we have equipment, as far as like sound equipment or anything like that, yes. No, it is not an actual delivery truck owned by a food company. Okay, and um, so you're keeping the live entertainment request, is that right? It's Yes, whatever was currently on the license. Okay, and now there's a note here that there are outdoor speakers under the awnings that broadcast loudly. Can you speak to you bringing out your noise engineer and addressing this? We actually um, took the speakers down from outside just to help kind of with that first initial sound mitigation. Um, so we detached those and took them in. We won't be taking them back out until we find, finalize an idea with the sound engineer of what will be best. Okay, and so um, w will you be willing to reduce the sound of that if the neighbors come and complain about you. Absolutely. That is something we've discussed with them. At any time, they are, you know, free to call us if they have an issue, if we're being a little bit too loud. We have no problems turning down the noise. Um, mm -hmm. We're usually, our noise, our doors are closed by nine, um, and we follow, you know, very strict sound ordinance where we are very quiet by at least nine o'clock in the neighborhood. We understand it is a family neighborhood. Right. And um, there's also a mention of, um, uh, of um, daily basis of trash, cigarette butts, drinking cups, beer bottles, other garbage. What What's your plan in terms of uh, making sure it's Our sand? plan for that is um, on the management side. Um, so it, it's gonna be something where our cook staff goes out every single morning, make sure that it's swept up. Um, it's something that my father personally does himself. He goes there every morning, he sweeps up. You know, as it is a bar, you know, we do have people that do smoke, so we do try. Um, to sweep them as much as possible. We are putting more cigarette receptacles out, so to help kind of mitigate that a little bit too. Um, and then as far as trash is concerned, we did have a few complaints about the trash company themselves kind of throwing some bottles around when they come and pick up ours, but we've had a discussion with them specifically about that. Um, so we will be double checking that as well. Great, and my only uh, recommendation on that is maybe not have the cook staff do that every morning, but maybe have someone do that on a much more frequent basis, uh, just a suggestion. And then just generally speaking, the inference that I drew from these letters is simply that since 2013, there seems to be a disconnect. And again, these letters are written back in October. I, I sounds like things have changed, which, which is, is positive in my book, but there seems to be some disconnect between the community and the management group, um, the new management since 2013, uh, sort of, I wouldn't say, just sort of not being invested or not, you know, sit, talking the talk but not actually carrying through on things. And, and it also sounds like efforts were made to reach out to your father that weren't returned. So can you speak to the responsiveness <coughs> to the community? Um, on my father's behalf, he, he is a CEO of a large federal contracting company, so that's the main reason why sometimes it's hard to get in contact with him. A part of the community initiative was I personally gave out my email address, my cell phone number. Most people in the neighborhood know exactly where I live. I live right there on the block. Um, so they can reach out to me directly now. I will be at every Locust Point Association meeting 
I think also Miss Mary, wonderful woman, but she was a neighborhood person. She was in that bar every single day. So I think the disconnect really came from them not seeing the owner every single day. It was kind of weird for the older customers, which we understand. So I will definitely be making more of an effort to be in there every single week, at least once a day. Great, because you know, obviously, that separate from the rules and responsibilities you and your father have in owning this, that there's a, you know, there's several rules and responsibilities and regulations that we have that require you to obviously be a good uh, corporate citizen in the community. Um, and we certainly don't want to see you come back on violations because the community can call 311, they can report you, they can do all that. We're trying to avoid that. Yes, sir. I don't have any. too. Um, I do had a question about the outdoor speakers, mm -hmm. um, and I guess it goes to staff. Do Are we um, able to authorize outdoor entertainment? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've always thought that our live entertainment was for interior space uh, as opposed to exterior. Well, I'm going to have to check. I can't give you the... Okay. the I, I'd rather confirm sure, than... Sure, sure, sure. Uh, Right. I mean, I guess on a limb, but the, with zoning, live entertainment usually means the premise, and that I would assume that would include the front. But let me check. Okay. I mean that that was a, a little bit concerning to me because once you have the outdoor speakers they've and they've the, taken I, them I know down. That, I know that, I understand that they're inside today, but the plan is to bring them back out if they're able to get their sound engineer to um, help them understand at what level they can be utilized. So there is a plan to bring them out, and, and I appreciate you telling us that. And my question is just, I can't imagine, if this is you know in a neighborhood, I, don't, I haven't been to this area, I don't know where you sit in relation to your neighbors, but if you've got outdoor amplification, I think that could be an issue. And, and you seem sensitive to now to the, the community concern so you'll hear about it before we will Absolutely. <laughs> and like, like I said I am a resident so I'm definitely understanding of people not wanting it to be noisy I don't want to hear people late at night either um, but the outdoor speakers we really do like even when we had them out there they were very quiet you could only hear them when you were right at the door it was mainly for the people that would stand out there and smoke mm. cigarettes but yeah they we took them in and if it's music. an issue we would definitely <laughs> not bring them back out anybody who's willing to stand out in January and smoke a cigarette probably doesn't need <laughs> musical right. come. no dancing in the streets they don't need entertainment <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's Anything further, me. commissioners? Yeah. Uh, I'll just note before uh, we rule that I don't see any history of violations. So, despite the uh, okay. complaints that we received, that nothing's risen to the attention of the board. Um, okay, on the basis of the uh, information contained in the application, our review of the objections, uh, our um, review of the approvals, the support you have from members of the community, the withdrawal of the one letter. Um, the testimony that you've provided this morning, Mr. Allison and Ms. Chenery, uh, and the proffers from Council, uh, I'm satisfied that you are making your best efforts to make this uh, uh, transfer of ownership work, uh, not only for you as a successful business, but also for the members of the community, the people who are your neighbors. So I would vote to approve the transfer. Okay. And I, I concur. I, I agree that uh, laudable efforts have been uh, made to be proactive in addressing the concerns and you've responded in a very robust way and that's good and um, the people in the neighborhood are going to be your customers so the more that they're happy and willing to come into your establishment the better for everybody so for those reasons I would support or join in the uh, the yes and I would join in as well uh, best of luck yeah good luck folks thanks thank you guys very much all exhibits for the record. Applicant Exhibit 1, Letter of Support, Locust Point Civic Association, dated January 19, 2017. Board Exhibit 1, Four Letters of Opposition. Board Exhibit 2, Position of Support. Thank you. Call the next case. Deandra Beckford and Damian Foster, Vibes by Island Vibes, LLC. Trading as V Lounge and Restaurant, 2101 Maryland Avenue. This is a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. It's an application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment, request for off-premise catering, and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Are you representing these folks? <laughs> no, we are actually the proprietors. Oh, okay. So uh, could each of you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, we do. Yes. And could each of you state your name into the microphone? DeAndre Beckford. Damian Foster. Eric Smith. Okay. And Mr. Smith, how are you connected? 
fine. How are you connected to? Fi- I'm connected to them. Uh, actually, I was the, the previous owner of this bar. Oh, okay. Um, and I did the transfer over with these guys, but I also came on to help, you know, facilitate and keep it going uh, and guiding uh, Mr. Foster and his new venture, uh, as well as me and Mr. Foster's a partner in a new venture, another bar that we're opening uh, sh- soon. Uh, so we became more of a partnership as well as just the transfer. And how long did you have the um, uh, lounge? Um, I actually incorporated the lounge. Uh, it was probably about a year and a half, almost two years now. Um, yeah, I've been there almost two years. Okay. Um, and Mr. Uh, Foster, are you going to be the primary person running it, or is Ms. Beckford? Uh, that's going to be split, but um, yes, we'll, uh, I'm going to be the primary person, correct. Okay. And what is your background? Um, I've been in the food and beverage industry for the past 12 years. Um, I've been uh, owning uh, restaurants in Baltimore now for the past six years. Um, I've been involved with uh, Boston Market doing consulting for them along the East Coast for seven years and recently with uh, Taylor Gourmet for over, uh, I'll say, four years, um, which was also with uh, alcohol service involved in the everyday operation as well. And are you, do you, have you taken the training? I certainly have. <laughs> okay. Uh, how about you, Ms. Beckford? What is your background? Well, I have um, no, um, I haven't been, this is, will be my first uh, um, actual time operating in bar, you know. Food. What, what have you done besides that? Well, I, I work at a law office. I've been working at um, a law firm for the past nine years. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so this Try is kind 40 of, so. it's kind of new to me. So. <laughs> Um, this is new to me, so. Okay, but you are interested, I take it, in learning this Definitely. business. Okay, Definitely. and uh, are you uh, a secretary, a paralegal, or what do you do at the firm? Well, so I'm a legal assistant. Um, I actually help with social security disability and medical assistance okay. at the firm. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, are you both aware of some of the uh, problems that arise in? owning these places with customers who are unruly, customers who get out of hand, people who try to be served when they're underage, messes in the neighborhood, uh, people who go out on the streets and offend the neighbors, and all those things that we hear about on a regular basis? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm certainly aware of these very, issues. Yes. Very, very much. <laughs> okay. And um, you obviously have encountered a lot of this over the two years that you've had yes. it. Yes. Well, actually, I've been owning bars in Baltimore City. My first liquor license came in 2007, uh, which was a Warwick, restaurant, uh, Warwick Bar and Lounge. Uh, when Coppin University came through and uh, they took that area down and put the rebuild. So I was there from 2007 to 2011. Uh, after which I was at Old Town Mall, have the art room gallery, which I applied for through the General Assembly and got a nonprofit Class C liquor license as well down there. Um, so I've been in the business a little bit, so I've been seeing some ups and downs, but needs to say I've never had an incident in the time that I have been in business. I've seen people get a little rowdy, um, so we usually have somebody, a security team, or something, depending on what we have in our events and stuff like that. So you plan to have security on the premises? Oh, yes. We have already um, contracted with LACOR. Um, They are at the premises every time that we're open um, in regards to whenever there's going to be any type of um, special events or alcohol service. So, yes, we we definitely have security at the premises. And we have a letter of support from Charles North Community Association. Who met with them? Um, I I actually did. I I think I met with uh, everybody within that area, and um, they all sent their best wishes to the association, which... (laughs) I thought you meant to us. <laughs> um, okay, so I, I applaud you for doing that. I think it's a good way to get started, get off on the right foot with the people in the community uh, and work with them so that you don't encounter these problems. Do the commissioners have questions? Um, I just had a, uh, a, a couple for Mr. Smith. I recall when you got the, the license, I think I was on the board then. How did that go? Uh, what what happened with that? Which one on the nonprofit? The, for the nonprofit. Oh, wow, that was a that was a whole uh, event. I have to go down there. It went well. Actually, all the senators backed this as well. Yeah, I, the business we, itself went well. It was, actually, this one here became a uh, actual spinoff of the art room, and it's still basically what we're doing is live, you know, entertainment art shows, and we still deal with you know um, open mics and dealing with uh, the community as far as performing arts and stuff like that. So we're still in those same neighborhoods of doing the same thing. So the, the art room 
it actually it was a became, success. Yes, a success, and it actually became bigger. And as I was saying, the business that we're doing now is actually spinning off into another one where we just acquired the three-story building, and we're looking to move into that uh, with them before the end of this year, or actually before spring, which we will be applying for a liquor license that as well uh, that will be called social 15 so we've been moving and autumn has been very very much successful okay good 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 job so mr. Foster currently you are this will be the only license that you're on correct yes, this will be the only license that I will be listed on correct okay right. so now Boston Market I got my issues with Boston Market <laughs> 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 but that's not that's not for today. <laughs> but they don't have a liquor license, no. so I want to hear just a little bit about your experience handling sure. uh, liquor licenses and all that's attendant to sure. that. Sure. Well, um, at uh, Taylor Gourmet, we do serve wine and beer, and uh, since our inception in um, 2000, I think it's uh, 2008, uh, we started out doing authentic Philadelphian hoagies in the D.C. area. Do you use cheese whiz? Oh yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that is authentic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we we um, a lot of the clients in that area, you know, they enjoy having a, a drink or two. Our first location was on the revitalized H Street District, mm -hmm. the Atlas District, mm -hmm. and um, you know, so we started off doing beers and wines, which we continue to do as well. And um, you know, I had to make sure that whenever I was in any of those stores. Mm -hmm. Um, the individuals that came in were definitely um, appropriate for alcohol consumption, okay. whether they were of age, whether they were um, w too much entrenched in, in, in the alcohol consumption. We, I had to make sure that all the rules and the guidelines were met mm -hmm. and upheld. Um, so that's where my experience came in. Um, as an owner, my experience came in. Um, this is my first restaurant that I actually have a lounge connected to. And um, we've been doing this since October. So I've been learning on the job in regards to what takes place. I make sure that I'm there every night that we're open. I make sure that the security follows all the rules and guidelines as set by the, the, the bodies, that um, the guideline, guideline and bodies. And I make sure that I'm present. Um, everybody comes in, they see me, I greet them. I make sure that if there's anything that's going off key, which it hasn't so far, make sure that that's corrected. I take very good visual notes of what's taking place to make sure that everything stays as I was supposed to be and that I'm in good graces with the community as well. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. And on the day-to-day -day basis, will you continue to be the one that's sort of managing? And, and what will Ms. Beckford? Yes. What will your role be? Well, basically, I will be just overseeing when he's not available, whenever he's not available. Okay. You're going to keep the books? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, thank you very much. If, if I come to to Vibes, is it, it uh, you know, do I get a little Jamaica? I know you're both from Jamaica. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. So. Our menu is infused with um, authentic Jamaican cuisine and uh, along with um, traditional American dishes as well with a little bit of twist to it. So you'll get a little bit of Jamaican in everything that you have. That sounds like right. a, a good a good good call. Um, I, I do appreciate the, uh, the interaction you've had with Charles North. Uh, it does mention that uh, that you have negotiated and signed an MOU. I don't know that I've seen an MOU. Do you have a copy of this MOU? Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. Can you provide it to us, please? Yes, definitely. And uh, you all have agreed to have whatever you've agreed to there be part of your license? Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to see the MOU and uh, as uh, Mr. Do you De just have one copy or can we have a copy? Um, that's the only copy that I have. That's the actual Sign the copy. Okay. So are you comfortable, I, I presume, as the, the chairman said, making this part of your license? Oh, yes, most definitely. Um, what's actually on there is everything that I anticipated it to be, being that it's a family community. Right. So, yes, I, I'm definitely right. in, in agreement Anything with further? Uh, no, uh, Mr. Page, the executive secretary, is going to make a uh, copy, copy for us. Okay. so that we can mark it as an exhibit and give it okay. back to you. Okay, so uh, the letter and the MOU will be received as um, evidence, and um, on the basis of the application, I also want to note for the record that I don't see any uh, violations in the past, so the clean record going forward. So I'm glad you're uh, assisting with this transfer with your experience. Um, based on the testimony that you've provided as well, uh, I would vote to approve the transfer subject to the terms of the MOU. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And I would agree as well and just, just kind of say congratulations to you, Mr. Smith, on good growth. 
Thank you. You're becoming a bit of a mogul. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, it's a good thing for Baltimore. It's a good area to be developing. Yeah. It, is. Yeah. it is. It's exciting. And I concur as well. Wish you the best you. of luck. Good luck, folks. Thank you very much. I'll enjoy the transfer from uh, the law. <laughs> It's not all that different. <laughs> Board Exhibit 1, Letter of Support, Charles North Community Association, dated January 25th, 2017. Applicants, Exhibit 1, MOU between applicants and Charles North Community Association. Thank you. Call the next case Ashraf Ibrahim, Sahim Ibrahim, and Nathaniel Brown. A&S Brothers Incorporated, trading as Lust, 408 East Baltimore Street. This is an application of transfer ownership of a Class BD7 Beer Wine Liquor License and a Class uh, AE Adult Entertainment License. I am, for the record, Melvin J. Kodensky, 19 East Fayette Street, representing the applicants in this case. Mr. Kodensky, has Mr. Nathaniel Brown ever been represented by White for Taylor Preston? He showed up on my conflict sheet. Sorry? Have you ever had uh, been represented by anyone from the law firm of Whiteford Taylor and Preston? Never heard of. <laughs> okay, that's good. I, the name, you know, uh, we we there are probably people named Nathaniel, and probably people named Brown I'm in our system, <laughs> and uh, it showed up, so I have to ask. Um, okay, would you gentlemen would you raise your right hands, please? I do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yeah. Uh, for the record, this <clears throat> particular license uh, is. Um, both a, a BD7 and an adult entertainment license. Uh, the applicants, the, the two brothers here, purchased Crazy John's, and it's all one building with Crazy John's and the adult entertainment. Uh, the uh, license was supposed to be part of the package that went along with the um, deal. For some reason, it didn't go through this, so they had to take it as a secured party because they were due uh, somewhere around $80,000 in, in uh, back rent. Uh, and they are on the premises. I'm, I think you're all familiar with Crazy John. You all probably had a hot dog or two there during your lifetime. Um, they've owned it since uh, March of 2016. Uh, the, either one of the brothers are on the premises uh, at all times because they're right next to there together. Uh, Crazy John's is open from 6 a.m. to 3 a.m., so they're there all the time. The bar and the adult entertainment, of course, one won't be operated 12 to 2. Um, uh, the Mr. Brown is uh, will be the person who will be mainly the manager, although they'll be there both times. He has experience. He's been in, uh, down on the uh, block area for probably six or seven years uh, in the adult entertainment um, uh, business. Uh, there's no food operation in, in the Lust, uh, if, and so there's strictly a bar with adult enter entertainment. Uh, they plan on having uh, approximately six or seven. Uh, employees give or take some they've done a massive cleanup in the place because the place had a really bad record with regard to and I think you see the last violation they paid the fine they went in there they uh, cleaned the place up painted it no structural things just trying to get the place um, uh, reopened um, uh, for uh, a business uh, since it was all part of their original uh, purchase that didn't go through um, other than that um, Mr. Uh, Brown will be the person I've explained to him about the adult entertainment. He's really aware of the part, what, prostitution and uh, the things that go down, allegedly going down on the block. Well, problems that can arise. Can, yeah. I mean, I don't think any of my clients have those problems, but. <laughs> Good save, Mr. Kadensky. <laughs> uh, and the, um, how long have they been running Crazy John's? Since, was it March of last year, 2016? Okay, and are these, I, I really am not that familiar, are they physically connected, the two buildings? It's a, the same, uh, one pr uh, property, they're not connected. You can't go from one to the other, is that correct? Yes, you can. Yeah, well, so they are connected. I don't know who's talking and they're not using the microphone. So. Uh, yeah, gentlemen, please, when you speak, step up to the microphone. Give your name first. Ashraf Ibrahim. And they are, can, can you go from one property? Yeah, they connected to each other. There's a door between. But I assume that if you're buying a hot dog, you don't get to walk no, into it's, the it's other the place. No, the door in the back. The door <laughs> in the back. Okay. Um, okay. Um, questions from the commissioners? Um, so, Mr. Brown, could you step up? You're going to be the person managing the day today. Yes, ma'am. Are you working there now? Lots is closed right now. I mean, but are you working to try to help get it cleaned up? Yes, ma'am. Reopened. All right. W where are you working now, though? I actually have a tow truck company. Uh, what is the name of the tow truck company? It's M and B Towing. 
And will that con- will you continue doing that as well? Yeah, I have a partner with it. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is your experience working either in a, a bar or adult entertainment? Actually, I've been working in uh, bars and restaurants for 20, I'm 44, since I was 18 years old. Okay, and what have you been doing? I've actually uh, worked as far as a kitchen manager, bar help. I've, I've went everything from cook, line cook, kitchen manager, bar assistant, bar back, bartender. Okay. Now, are you familiar with Baltimore City's uh, rules and regulations regarding adult entertainment? Yes, ma'am. And where, uh, once you open, where will you be keeping your records of employees? Um, we have an office. Uh, usually, the way we keep records, uh, you, the ladies come in, you get the ID, uh, get them a sign form, a consent form, um, just in the office area. Okay, and where's the office area? The office is in the rear of the uh, bar. So it's in the building? Correct. Okay. Um, I just looked at uh, the application, and you do have a history of um, uh, a, a problem in the past. I think, was that you with the assault second degree? Was that you? Am I misreading that? Excuse me? From 1998. From 1998? I did have one in 1998. So that's, but that's you, right? Yes. Okay. Um, that was a long time ago. Yes, ma'am. So um, almost 20 years, not quite. Yes, ma'am. Um, and you've not had any problems since then? None. Okay. And whatever incident, that, ex- whatever factors that gave rise to that in 1998 are certainly resolved at this point, right? Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I, I understand that you've worked uh, in, in bars and you've had different jobs. But have you worked in the adult entertainment industry in the past? Yeah, I just want to correct them. I actually, uh, in between uh, working in restaurants and uh, bar, I actually uh, helped start a restaurant called Holy for Holies in Hamden. Um, I worked there for 14 years. Okay. I worked there, and I walked, worked on the block. Uh, but I've been working on the block uh, over eight or nine years. And what so have you been doing on the block? I actually went doorman, floorman. Bartender, What's bar floor manager. Man? Floor man is <laughs> floor man is uh, the guy in charge of getting the ladies to go to the stage. Uh, Keeps okay. the flow going. Okay. Pretty much like security. Okay. All right. All right. Those are all the questions that I have. So um, we know that the, I believe, and Mr. Kadensky will correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure. Lust has a bit of a of a history, um, and so. I want to hear about how you intend to kind of, sorry, Mr. Chairman, proactively address those issues um, uh, to, because this is a special, this is a special, you know, you, you're getting two licenses here. And so it's a little bit unusual, but, you know, it's not just the liquor license, it's the adult entertainment license. And so we've had some issues uh, uh, in the past. So if you could speak to um, and give us some kind of, confidence that you'll run this operation as it should be run. You have two separate rules and regulations that you have to comply with. So if, if um, the majority, one of the majority owners, uh, either Mr. Ibrahim can speak to that. I, I do appreciate Mr. Brown's uh, background and experience. That's very helpful. State your name again. For that. Ashraf Ibrahim. Um, as a landlord, um, I want to make sure uh, the business run right will be there we there every day in crazy jones either me or my brother so one of us is going to be there every day we'll make sure those issues in the past won't happen again i know they have when we bought the place we didn't have any idea about what happened in the past we didn't know that they have an issue taxes issue or some other stuff so we'll make sure it won't happen in the future again Follow the regulation, pay the taxes on time, have the the place cleaned. Basically, we're going to be there all the time, me or my brother. And um, assuming an, uh, assuming that you're not, or assuming that you're next door, or assuming, uh, speak to how you will have either Mr. Brown or another manager there on the premises who can communicate to you instantaneously. Will you have that? Will you have someone there? in the event, whether it's Mr. Brown or someone else, in case something is to occur, that you will be notified immediately. We agree with Mr. Brown. He's going to be a full-time manager in there. So he's, he's going to be there 
all the time, plus one of us is going to be there all the time, like either me or my brother. Right. Thank you. No. Nothing further. Anything further? Nothing further. Commissioner, anything else? You all live in Hanover, Maryland, correct? And is it your plan to continue to live in Hanover, which I guess is not all that far from here, but anyway. It's not the far. It's like 12 miles from here. So for now, we, we don't have any other plans, but my brother, is, we live together, so he's going to move out three, uh, soon. Does he's he know that? Actually, he's looking for a house right now. <laughs> Okay, you've just been served notice. <laughs> so now, the, no, I, the only other thing I'd say it's just per personal. My husband and daughter love Johnny's, and it's become a family, a bit of a family joke that my daughter can handle the Johnny's hot dogs better than her father. And I don't know how it got started, but <laughs> anytime a difficult situation comes up in, within the family, my daughter says, "I can handle my hot dogs." So, it's a little side note. So, okay. anyway, congratulations. Thank you. On the basis of the uh, evidence contained in the record, the testimony that we've received this morning, the proffers from counsel, um, the, um, and I, I would uh, vote to approve the transfer of the BD7 license and the adult entertainment license. So I'm going to vote to approve it and just express concern given the past um, problems and um, the location. Uh, because it's adult entertainment, there's a lot of scrutiny and attention that gets paid. And uh, just a cautionary tale to be very sure that um, um, you stay within compliance and don't come back for the other side of our calendar, of our docket. I concur with my colleagues, and I actually think one of the benefits of you having the license is that you own the establishment next door. So you have to be there and present, or someone in power does. And uh, I think that's critically important. As I said, I. I concur with uh, the other commissioners. Keep your eyes open. Good luck. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. I asked them if they ever seen Crazy John. <laughs> Basking me in the obscurity under an assumed name in the Greek islands. Why does he have to have an assumed name? Why does it have to be Greece? And, and why does it have to be Greece? People that are looking for him. <laughs> oh. well, well, now they know he's in Greece. <laughs> they can't even get there to bankrupt. They can't get in and out. Oh, that's a whole nother conversation for another day. On the last case in the morning docket, Terry Kaufman, Olga Kaufman, and Barbara Manfield, 110 Water Street, Series 274 LLC, trading as Sopano's Steakhouse, 110 Water Street. This is a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. It's a request to expand premise to include the second and third floors for business. And you, sir, are? Terry Kaufman. Okay. Long time no see. Yes. <laughs> Raise your right hand, please. Now you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, so you were here recently? Last week. Yes. Last week. <laughs> it shows you. It, well, I was too confused last week with all the um, cupcakes and things. So, uh, and you're back because you want to uh, expand the license to include the second and third floors? Correct. Okay. Is there anything else you want to tell us, sir? No. Do the commissioners have questions for Mr. Kaufman? I is zoning approval required? Uh, everything's approved. Um, we're B4. It's, yes. It's B4. And so it, it is required. Above, above it was B4. 108 and 110 water is locked into one piece. I only leased part of it before now. Now, I've leased it all now since 2013, but I've been uh, working on the space upstairs slowly as money came along and, and I did all the work actually really? okay <clears throat> what is the what is the plan for the expansion same, same. type of operations yeah, just, just more dining more. rooms uh, extra dining rooms okay okay and there's a diagram I think in our record showing the size of it and there are decks on those floors as well pardon me there are decks off the back of it or no, there's going to be decks oh that's a uh, something that you hope to do in the future Absolutely. more money comes in <laughs> money. That makes some money. Always good to expand one's business, I agree. Yep. Um, yep. Commissioner Greenfield, do you have any questions? I have, I have no questions. Okay. On the basis of the information that is contained in the application, your testimony this morning and what we learned when you were before us uh, just last week, I would vote to approve the uh, request. I would as well. I concur. 
Good luck, sir. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You too. That concludes our morning docket. I think. Oh. Uh, so I think that's our docket for the day because the afternoon got postponed. Is that correct? Correct, sir. So we'll be back next week. Yep. Thank you.